Uh, today's piece of artwork is going to be a nice Christmassy one and it's it's surprisingly simple. You only need a few colours. I'm working with pastels, chalks and charcoal. You can just use pastels. If you've got coloured chalks they'll work just as well. Um, here's the idea of it. A snowman waving off in the distance and it's this idea of getting a sense of, of light into our picture as well. Okay, so that's a, a quick draft I've done before just to show you what it should look like. Let's do one now. So uh, getting the, the paper landscape rather than portrait, it doesn't really matter, but for the picture I want, the composition, I'm going to have the snowman looking off into the distance. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chalk, a piece of white chalk, and on black paper, I'm just going to whiz it across. So I'm not drawing lines, I'm using the flat piece of the chalk, the width of the chalk. And in the distance, I'm going to press down a little bit lighter because it's further away, so it's less in focus. And as I come down the page, I'm going to change the angles a little bit and I'm going to press down a little bit harder and then I'm just going to do this and then a little bit harder still down at the bottom that's my foreground so I've got a background a foreground and a near ground and if you've got any bits under the table it'll make a mark on the paper so just clean those bits up as you go right I'll do so I've got some hills and things in the distance right that's my uh, basic bits of background middle ground and foreground now I'm going to put my snowman in on this one I have the snowman facing that way on this one I'm going to have him facing that way just because I can uh, so when I do my snowman a little practice demonstration here what you want to do is you want three overlapping circles head being the smallest the body a little bit bigger uh, the upper body bigger and then the lower body the biggest and you want them to be fairly central if you have them either too similar in size or looking a little bit lopsided it looks like the snowman's going to fall down if you want a snowman moving as though it's a, a live snowman that can work really well but if you just want it to be a stationary snowman you need to give it a sense of gravity and it needs to look grounded and the other thing you need to do just slightly flatten it off at the bottom so it's not fully rounded it's a rounded shape but slightly flatter, like this. So I'm going to start with the head. I'm not drawing the lines in, I'm just putting in the circles on the flat again. That would be the head. I can draw in my neater lines later. Um, some people prefer doing it with pencil to begin with because they're a bit nervous about making mistakes. I wouldn't because if you put a pencil line on the paper, you can always see that line through the chalk. So it's, it's better not to. But if it gives you the confidence for the first few goes, yeah, that's absolutely fine. It really doesn't matter. Next circle, that little bit bigger. And as I say, slightly flatter. And you've got to have that overlap. If you don't have the overlap, it doesn't really work. And then the third one. And can you see that I'm pressing down a little bit harder? So even though it's white on white, you've still got the layers that you can see. Where the snowman is, right. I'm just tidying up my lines a bit now because I can. It's not my final line, so I'm not pressing down too hard yet. That gives me the shape I'm after. So it's that one, not that one. That's meant to be a cross. That's terrible. There we go. Right. And I'm going to have him looking off in the distance at a light. So for the light, um, the easiest one to do, which is what I did here, is where I'm going to do a lamppost. I just think it looks rather charming. Um, I've also done this picture with classes where we've spent a few extra lessons where we've looked at drawing buildings and we've got the light coming from a window and somebody waving out of the window. That's a little bit trickier, so I'm going to do a simplified version for now, as I say, with a lamppost. So I'm going to work out where my, the top of my lamppost is going to be. Make sure you've got fairly clean fingers. And then I'm going to swirl my yellow around and I'm not going to do it with a point because I want a nice flattish section. I'm going to do it on that bit there, so that's nice and flat. If I was to do it on that bit, it would be too wide. So I've got a little flat bit there that I can work with. Another thing you can do is if you've got a bit of sandpaper or just rough paper somewhere, you can rub your chalk or your pastel down and get some of the dust and just get that dust on your finger and make your circles. I'm just doing it this way for now. And as I go out, I'm just getting a little bit fainter. So by the time I'm here, I'm barely putting anything on at all. That's how I'll do my light. And then I'm just going to whiz around like so. 
I'll be adding more later, but that will do for now. Now, back to my snowman. A few other things I want to do to him. I want to give him a little hat because I think a hat looks good. When you do your hat, I'll use this piece here. This will be the wrong version. Uh, I'll use a red so you can see it. Don't put a hat on with a straight line. Always follow the curve of the head. You see that slight curve there? It just keeps your shapes looking rounded. As soon as you put a straight line on, a flat line, you've lost the shapes that you're trying to create. So I'm going to put a little hat on this chap over here. Um, I'm just doing a woolly hat because I like the woolly hats. Um, top hats, baseball caps, any sort of hat. It's all good. So I'm just going over the top a little bit bigger than the actual head shape. And I want the sort of bobbly bit in there. And then fill that in. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit like that. And for the scarf, shall I put a scarf on? Yes, I will. Why not? If this circle, oh, let's use this. If I put my scarf on, again flat I've lost my shape what I've got to do is I've got to think these are the circles and my scarf is going to follow that shape my snowman's looking in that direction so you won't see much of the front of the scarf you'll only see a little bit of it so you don't need to overdraw it so we're just going to put in a little bit of the color and again it doesn't matter too much if you go slightly wrong we can always tweak it later we can always cover some of the lines we're not happy with so that will be my scarf there Right, where am I up to? Um, let's get the lamppost in. When you do the lamppost, one of the most common mistakes is, uh, where can I draw this? I'll do it down here. Uh, I'll draw the lamppost in blue and show you how it, you don't want it to look. So if this is my lamppost, I don't want it to be really short and stubby. It's got to have some height and it's got to be quite long and slender. So, um, again, you don't have to do it this way. You can think about doing, um, what could you do? You could actually have a fire down below. You could have the light from the window. You could have lights from cars. You could have it, the moon in the sky. A really nice one I've done in the past um, is where we had the moon in the sky. You don't want a yellow light then, then you keep it a, a nice white light. And we had a silhouette of Santa and the reindeers going across the sky. And the snowman was waving and that looked really, really nice. One of my children did that. Um, but as I say, this is a really simple one just for this. And I'm going to mark out the shape of my lamppost. I'm not using a ruler, but I can draw fairly straight lines. If you're a bit unsure, you can just vary gently with a pencil so it's not leaving a mark. Um, or much of a mark, you can put a, a line in just to give you something to copy off. And then I want a little bit of texture down at the bottom. I don't want it to look just smooth and round. Right, so that will be that. This is fairly basic at the moment. I'm now going to start building it up. I want it to look a little bit lighter. So I'm going to intensify my yellow on the inside. If I've got a light here shining down, and the top of this is going to catch the light. The top of this will catch the light. The top of this will catch the light. It's only a little fleck of the yellow. It doesn't need much at all. And then down at the base, you'll have some light just landing on the floor. And the further away you get, the fainter it becomes. That's all that's needed there, really. Maybe just a little bit. Oops. Down here as well. That will do us. Don't want to do too much. There we go. Now, once I've got that bit of light, oh, one final thing. If you've got a source of light, after you've got the colour of the light, which in this case is yellow, you then go back to the centre of it and make it extra bright by adding white. There we go, there's my light. And if you want, you can even just add one or two beams coming out, but keep those incredibly faint. That will do us. Right, back to the snowman. I've got a snowman who's looking at a source of light. So what I need to do is on this side of him, 
I need to capture some of that light. So I'm just going to use the yellow and it's going to be here, here, and here. Any bits that are a bit smudgy, I can use some black just to tidy my lines up. And then very gently, and make sure you've got fairly clean things. I just tend to give them a bit of a rub. Go like that. And that's the yellow of the light hitting the side of the snowman. So if I've got light, I'll also do a little bit on the top of the hat. Because it's a yellow light, you'll get a yellowish sort of reflection. If it was a different coloured light, you'd get the, whatever the colour the light is, that would be put on them. So if you've got something with a red light, for example, you'd have a red light, a red reflection. Now, if you've got the light side, you also need the dark side. So, use a little bit of blue. And here's a picture I've done earlier just to show you. Sometimes children do this. I say you kind of do a C shape. Can you see this doesn't look 3D? It looks like we've just drawn almost like, um, how can I put it? I describe it as a C, but it's got to follow the curve around the body. So let's go back to my, my picture I did earlier. So can you see how I've blended that in? So I've got the yellow side and the blue side, but this doesn't look like this. This is too solid and it stops too short. The shadow has got to come underneath. If you think it's a ball, the underside is going to be slightly darker too. So let's get this out of the way. This will be dark and it will come in to about here. This will be darker, come to about here. That's a little bit darker and just under the rim of the hat will be darker. Don't bring the blue in towards the yellow because then you end up creating a green, which we don't want. And a little bit bluer here as well. I also like it a little bit darker with a hint, just a little bit of black as well on the very far side. Not overdoing it at this point, just a hint. Then clean his fingers and I'm going to blend that in. One of the things I teach the children is when you're actually doing a shape, when you're blending, try and follow the shape that you're working with. So if I'm doing this, I've got rounded shapes, I'll use a rounded pattern. What I won't do is that, because that just makes it look flat. If I go from side to side, it's no good. I have got to follow the shape. Hopefully that makes sense. Right, out of the way. If your fingers are getting in the way a little bit, you can use something like a cotton bud. And if you overblend the colours, don't worry too much, we can just always add a little bit more white. You can only add so much though, because after a certain point, your paper will become saturated. It becomes absolutely full of chalk dust and you can't put any more on there. Right, uh, I'm going to do a little bobble on the hat. And the back of it will be just, just slightly blue. Does not need much. I'm not going to put the yellow on the front because I don't think it would capture enough to, to mark off. Now I'm going to put the nose in. Because my snowman is looking away, I don't need to draw a full face. All I need to do, and we've got the face going up that way, is a bit, a tiny bit of the snowman's nose. If I do that, my brain is telling me where his face is. I don't need to add any extra bits. I'm going to add just a hint of the yellow on the top. And then, with a finish, like I'm using charcoal for this, just going to add a little bit of texture to the carrot and also use it almost like a rubber to tidy up some of the smudgier lines I've got. There we go. Now I'm just outlining my hat a little bit more and I'm going to put a little bit of texture into it like so, not too much. And then to finish him off, I could put more of a pattern in the scarf, but I'm going to leave it for now because this is pretty quick. Need to add a few extra lines in with the charcoal just to make it a little, 
little more definition that's absolutely fine I'm just going to put his arms in and for this one I did him waving on this one what should we do I'm going to have him holding something so the arm at the back hand on hips don't need to draw much on that and on this one don't have the arm too far forward if that's the side of his body his arm will come out from about here so see where the arm comes from there we go and what can he hold some sort of a brush type thing um, just roughly marking where that will be and now if we think back to what I did before with the light the light's coming in so it's going to capture that side and can you see how it makes it pop out it doesn't need much this side it will be the top of this bit of the arm it will be that side of the forearm and of the stick the, the pole for the brush be on this side you can just capture a little bit of light on that side where the, the bits are all sewn together or whatever it is and then, yeah, the sweeping brush it's a bit too yellow so I'm going to just tone that down with a little bit of white there we go that's pretty much it you can always add more bits on um, you can add a, a hint of a forest in the background you don't need to do too much how are we over time looks quite a long on this just add a couple of vertical lines for where the trees would be then bring it down some diagonal slashes don't put them too much into the light because then you'll spoil it and then you can capture just a hint of the trees just catching whichever side the light would be hitting them on not too much because it's away in the distance just a hint so you can do that if you wanted as I say you can do the house you could do something in the sky but a really simple way of using your chalks and charcoals to create a nice 3d winter scene and with that I think I'm done.